I heard about this shooting because I actually was walking to that classroom. I had class in there the next um, like class period and I was walking through the DuSable parking lot and we saw some students like running and we really were confused and someone was like you need to get back into your residence hall right now and we're like why what's going on and someone was screaming that they had a gun and it was then that we saw like a whole bunch of cops swarm the building and there was another cop who came up to us and he told us that we need to get back to our residence hall. Uh, when I first heard about it, I was actually done with class. I was at Stevenson cafeteria and it was just like hearsay, like, oh, we heard, you know, there's a shooting and all that stuff. So, you know, it really is just kind of like, what? And sat down eating and then it, like, we heard everybody's phone ringing, everybody talking about it. And uh, I was like, oh man, you know, I better call my mom, you know, let her know. Uh, after that, you know, we left Stevenson. There was nobody on around the dorms except there was just a helicopter, and you could hear, you know, sirens and stuff. And the dorms are on lockdown. You had to show your ID and everything. I actually first heard um, I was leaving the dorms, and a girl came up to me when I was waiting for the elevator. I was like, I, I heard there was a shooting. You know, be careful. And at that time, I thought nothing of it because she was always like crazy. You know. I always like to gossip and make up stories. So I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll take my chances. I went down and I started walking to class um, and I was actually going to Cole. I had class right after. Um, I made it right past uh, Lincoln by the wreck. And then um, I met up with my friend uh, who was also my pledge brother. He's like, hey man, let's go back to the dorms. You know, there was a shooting at Cole Hall. I first heard about Dan, I was, um, in my room, I got a phone call um, from one of the guys I pledged with, and he said, you know, we gotta go to the house, you know, Danny's been shot. Um, so I immediately, you know, tossed on a hoodie, and me and two of my buddies just ran over there as quick as we could. Um, and when I first got there, I was like, you know, how is he, how is he? And then everyone was kind of silent, and I could tell by the tone, and the tears in everyone's eyes that he didn't make it, which was very surprising because Dan was probably the strongest person I knew, um, you know, they called, he was the gentle giant. He was six foot four, 280 pounds, all muscle. And, you know, once you get to know him, they put a smile on your face like nothing. I think the shooting affected me by making me more mature. I think I came in as a freshman kind of naive. I lived kind of a sheltered life. I didn't think bad things could ever happen. And I think it made me realize, you know, that things do happen in life. And that's why I need to live every day to the fullest and why I wanted to take advantage of things because I wasn't guaranteed tomorrow. I so I just lived kind of in a small bubble, and so I think it made me realize that there's a lot more out there and that, you know, I'm not guaranteed tomorrow, and so it's even that more important to be responsible, get things done. Um, and I think it just made me grow a lot as an adult um, and take on, like, more responsibility. Yeah, I mean, I still think about it a lot. It's hard not to. I mean coming from an experience like that, especially your freshman year. I mean, everybody's freshman year in college, you're just like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna go and party and have a good time away from the parents. And then something like that happens and you're just like, whoa, you know, I mean, yeah, I still think about it. It's hard to, you know, get it out of your head, but I mean, you just gotta keep, keep going, I guess, you know. As far as the three years go, um, it kind of affects me. Um, you know, granted I wasn't in the room, but whenever someone, you know, walks in the back door, or walks in late, you know, I always flinch because you never know um, what's going to happen.